Welcome to Killer Cuisine, where we cover your favorite killers and their last meals. I'm Alex Franco, and today we're looking at Victor Harry Figure, whose capital punishment led to a very interesting request. So, what was this request? Let's find out. Victor Harry Figure was born sometime in 1935 in St. John's, Michigan. Apparently, the hometown did not rub off on him. His mother died at the age of six due to illness, and his father was addicted to alcohol. Even though his father was still living, Fager lived with other family members such as grandparents, uncle, and later an aunt. He would eventually be placed in a home for boys. He had an early record of minor theft, and as a minor, some sources say that he started the life of crime at the age of 13. At the age of 16, he would be released from the boys' home and would commit burglary and car theft, which resulted in a conviction. After his release and during his parole, he stayed with an uncle who provided him $50 a week for necessities. So nice. His parole officer disagreed with the amount and had it lowered to $40 a week. What a butt. To make matters worse, Fager's father would take some of the fun. Probably <coughs> for alcohol. In 1955, Fager found himself once again trading a driver's seat for a courtroom seat and time behind bars. That's foreshadowing. Wink. In the summer of 1960, just shortly after his release, Fager would rent a room in Dubuque, Iowa. He began looking through the yellow pages, and on the evening of July 11th, he would contact the home of Dr. Edward Bartels. Miss Bartels answered the phone. Fager identified himself as Ed Stevens, and although Fager was not married, he claimed that his wife needed medical attention. Miss Bartels informed her husband, Dr. Bartels, and he agreed to help. He then left his home and wrote the address 1134 Locust Street, Ed Stevens. This would be the last time she saw him alive. Dr. Bartels drove his 1959 two-door blue-gray Nash Rambler automobile to meet with Mr. Stevens. And you know how Fager feels about his cars. Once there, Dr. Bartels was kidnapped by Fager. Authority believed that Fager was contacting medical professionals in an attempt to get drugs. Fager would later kill him with a single shot to the head and dump his body in a cornfield. Not something a medical professional could fix. A few days later in Birmingham, Alabama, Fager would be arrested for attempting to sell the vehicle. The person he was trying to sell it to was James B. Alford, and he would later tip off the FBI because Fager had an out-of-state vehicle with no title paper. After his arrest, Fager claimed that there was another person involved who killed Dr. Martels. This individual went by the name of Alex and had a taste for drugs. According to Fager, Alex killed Dr. Martels and dumped them in the Mississippi River. No evidence has ever been found to support his claim, and no one took a bite out of his story. Fager would later be tried, convicted, and sentenced to death by hanging. Appeals were made, but were denied, so not very appealing. At this point, only President John F. Kennedy could reverse the death sentence, but he did not do so because he believed the crime was too brutal. Fager would later be hung on March 15th of 1963 in Dubuque, in Dubuque, Iowa. So up to this point, Fager has one convicted kill, zero suspected kills, and has claimed to kill zero people because his imaginary friend did it. So, what was Victor Fager's last meal? He requested a single olive with a pit still in it. When asked about this humble request, he hoped the tree would sprout as a symbol of peace. After his death, they found the pit still in his suit pocket. They promptly removed it. Because of the simplicity of this final meal, Killer Cuisine will be making the martini to help us better enjoy this last meal. And now you know the killer, so let's get to the cuisine. We'll make a simple drink for a simple last meal. Here we have three ounces of vodka, one ounce of dry vermouth, and an olive for garnish. We've doubled the quantity because that's what Fager's dad would do, also because we have this large glass. We'll be mixing ours with a shaker just like someone who has a license to kill. Ours is filled with a cup full of ice. First, we're going to add the vodka and dry vermouth. Then shake for 30 seconds like someone who's on death row. 
You can serve traditionally, or I guess you can always take a shot like you would at a doctor's head. Then add the garnish. When drinking, hold the stem to maintain the perfect temperature. Drink responsibly and enjoy. Thank you for joining us today. Make sure to like and subscribe to be notified of future videos. And until then, this has been Killer Cuisine.